back, everyone. We're here at CPAC talking with Representative Ted Budd. And Representative, it's a real pleasure having you on. Honored to be here. Thank you. So I understand just launched this new, you're launching this new commission, the 1776 Commission. Why well, don't tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to take credit for it, but what we want to do is preserve it. The sad thing is, is that it was, well, the great thing is that Trump was doing it as, uh, as a counter to the 1619 project which really it started uh, two years ago in uh, 2019 to talk about putting slavery at the center of our national narrative. That's part of our narrative, but it's not the whole narrative. So we launched the 1776 Commission to talk about our, our founding principles and what led to a nation of laws and not a, a nation of uh, you know, power by men. And so that's what differentiates us from all the other countries. Uh, and now on the very first day of the Biden administration, he canceled that commission. So essentially you have conservative universities like Hillsdale and other academics that are supporting it, but it's not an official commission at this point. It's being held in, in uh, conservative academia. And, and I've seen a lot of the mainstream media and, of course, the Biden administration claiming that it was racist. Uh, what, what's, your, what's your response to that? Well, that's wrong. I mean, I can be real short. It's wrong. So, <laughs> but, you know, I, I think that's part of their narrative is to distract people. That's always a distraction now. Uh, they've made that word, while racism is horrible, and for what it really is. This is not racism. This talks about the fact that, yeah, this, is, this was a, uh, a, a very bad part of our history, but the way the nation was founded, we overcame it. I mean, you look at 1865. Well, first of all, you go back to 1776. You go back to 1789 with the Constitution. You go to 1865 or 1863 with the Emancipation Proclamation. The, uh, the, uh, and then you go forward to the civil rights movement of 1868 and the years surrounding it. Tremendous freedoms, and we're always on a, a march towards more freedom, but they're, it's regressing now. They call it progressivism, but it's truly regressivism. We're going backwards. And, uh, you know, the devil always accuses of his own sins, and that's what we're seeing right now from the left. When they say racism, it's actually a power grab from them, from them that leads to more elitism, which is more racism. Yeah, well, and you know, one of the big models of the 1619 Project was Howard Zinn's, you know, People's History of the United States. This whole kind of alternate take on American history, really from yeah. a communist perspective. And I think the question is, if they're rewriting American history and teaching this narrative as their history that really only kind of criticizes and teaches hatred of our founding principles, what does it put in its place? Well, the 1776, it, well, we need to talk about that we're endowed by our creator uh, with equal value, with equal rights. That's where equal rights come from, is that we're created with equal love from our Creator. And uh, that's, what, that's what the rights are from. They're, they're, they're in us already. And it's a recognition of those rights from 1776 onward. This is about power of the government to tell you what you should do, who you should be. And I just think that's completely wrong. That's why 1776 is so important. Because these founding principles are timeless principles. They don't age out over time. There's not something that needs to be done in regards to our founding principles that's new today in 2021. Those principles still exist and they're timeless because they're from our Creator. You know, this is interesting. The, the difference you're saying is basically the 1619 Project presents this idea that, you know, American government was kind of basically fundamentally wrong and evil and that freedom needs to be granted essentially by the government, that these kinds of rights and protections come from the government, as opposed to the founding fathers who said these are inalienable rights and government is there to protect them. Is, is that accurate? I would, I would say that's completely accurate. I agree. Like our rights come from our creator, not from government. And what you do is, is you make people part of the perpetually aggrieved class. And if they're always aggrieved, and then they become revolutionaries and they overturn a system that has provided tremendous freedoms for now on 250 years. Uh, that's what's very scary, is that you, you create a nation of malcontents that don't realize how good we actually have it. Look, people are voting with their feet. I mean, look at the, uh, look at the immigration challenges we have, but it's because we're so success, successful as a nation compared to other nations that people want to come here. So if we're so bad as 1619 says, then why are people coming here? And I think it's, uh, it's actually, it's ridiculous on its face, their claims. You can't put the fact that, uh, you, you can't focus on everything we've done wrong. No one is making the claim. I'm not making the claim. The 1776 uh, Commission is not making the claim that we're a perfect nation. We've overcome some ills. We've overcome slavery. 
we've got more to overcome, and you're not going to do it through 1619. Now, the 1776 Commission, is this established now? What, what's the status? Where is it at? I believe it's being held at the, uh, at the Hillsdale uh, College. And, uh, so it's, it's yeah, already in play then? It, it's there, right. Oh, now, yeah. look, it's been canceled as an official commission and study by the U.S. government on uh, day one in an executive <laughs> order by Joe Biden. I think that's very unfortunate. Yeah. And so how is this going to go going forward, this new commission you're part of starting? Well, I, I wouldn't take credit for it. I want to be a promoter of it, and I want to be a student of it. And uh, I want to encourage uh, those at Hillsdale, those at other universities, conservative academics. And I want to make sure that all of your viewers, and you've got a lot of them, you guys have really grown, so well done there. But I want to encourage people, look it up, study it. It's only a 42-page document. But the thing that it needs to do is counter the 4,500 classrooms where 1619 has become part of the curriculum. I think that's tragic. So this needs to be the basis for the next curriculum. It's, it's essentially a framework that you can develop off of into curriculum to be proud of our founding. Don't deny the problems that our nation has had before, but let's realize that the framework of the nation was set up to be able to overcome things like slavery, and we did. And let's not revert to it. So the Trump administration, they had actually started this project again, the one that was canceled by the Biden administration mm -hmm. day one. Yeah. And this was looking to create a new type of curriculum to challenge New York Times 1619 project, which is now being kind of adopted by schools across the country. Yeah, 4,500 classrooms in 4, all 50 states. So what was actually the original plan with, this, with the 1776 project, the one Trump had started? And could that have really become a framework for schools, given that schools are kind of, you know, tend to be against this kind of stuff in general? Well, I think you have to create the narrative. You have to create a counter-narrative, and that's what 1776 did. Uh, and then off of that, you've got perhaps charter schools, you've got private schools, you've got uh, church-affiliated schools, and then you have districts around the country. Remember, we've got about 3,000 counties and we got nearly as many uh, school districts. So I would say to those school districts, that's an opportunity for them to choose through their school boards what they can adopt. But we need to create a positive alternative to the negative 1619. Now, if you were to tell these different school districts one thing about, you know, they, they've heard the rumors, oh, this is racist. Oh, shouldn't we get involved with this, you know, protecting these minority kids and helping them understand, you know, that slavery is a problem and so on, as opposed to the 1776 commission? What, what would you tell them if they're trying to decide between 1619 or 1776? Well, let's go outside of the project for a minute. And, and, and somebody important in the entrepreneurial, his, entrepreneurial history of our country, Henry Ford, and he's famous for saying whether you believe you can or you can't. You're right. What 1619 does is it convinces you that you're either guilty or you're a victim. You're one of the two. And at that point, somebody has to come in and rescue you. And according to them, it's the government. So do you want to teach the next generation that they can? You want to teach them to be optimists and people that move our country forward? That's what 1776 does. They become part of the lineage of our founding fathers, regardless of their race realizing that they're all created by our Creator equally, and they have opportunity. So I would rather give them 1776, one, because it's true, and two, because it creates independent human beings. And I think that's the future of our country. Yeah, and that's powerful. Really, the idea of whether, what you said about you're either a victim or you're, you know, the person guilty of carrying out these, you know, crimes against people. That there's only one or the other, yeah. and the only solution to that is big government. If you if you believe the 1619 Project narrative, and I think that's very deceptive because the way it frames it is this kind of social justice, but it really it's convincing half of the population, well, maybe less than that, that they're victims, and the other half that they're the ones who are fundamentally guilty and they need to be like apologetic about it. Yeah. And it's framed as this kind of compassion or caring narrative. Do you think this is kind of a legitimate care or do you think it's being done solely for the purpose of government power? Well, I think there's a lot of decent people out there. And I make no accusations at the, at the, the level of, of teacher, classroom, parent, anything like that, that think, wow, maybe I missed piece of, a piece of history and I need to self-correct. And so they're unwitting. You know, they're busy, right? They've got a lot going on. They've got to make ends meet. They've got to navigate COVID. They see this thing come in. They're like, oh, maybe so. And they're just very vulnerable because they're not focused on its diabolical academic roots and, and the, the, the entrapment that it leads to. And so I would just caution your viewers to share with their neighbors and with their school boards the problems that are inherent in it and where it actually leads. But I think those who assembled it realize 
and, and I would say they absolutely realize where it's headed and then it leads to more government control because they in their heart of hearts believes that government is the solution. And I believe that that's not the solution. You can't lean on identity politics, which is a power grab mechanism of the, of the left. You need to have strong individuals aware of their, the fact that they're created and that there's a purpose and that we play a part in history and there's somewhere that we're headed. And I think you have to understand that and that's what 1776 is more about. Uh, just last question, this yeah. new commission, the 1776 commission, say 10 years down the line, where do you see it and what, what do you hope it will achieve? I like the fact that there's a counter narrative to the progressive left that has been eating from the inside out our school system. Right now, 1619, I mentioned before, it's in 4,500 classrooms and growing across our, uh, our country. It's in all 50 states, including my state of North Carolina, and what an amazing state. And I just, I'm, I'm so concerned that there's no counter narrative, but now there is. So we, we can't let this die on the vine. No, it's not an official government project at this point, but we need to be through the Department of Education in the future. We need to win in 2024, right? So we can take over the administration and reverse the erosion from the radical left. But we need to preserve this. We need to develop it. We need to have uh, develop uh, uh, curriculums that can be in the classroom so people understand why it's so important to understand the founding of our nation. Hey, Representative Ted Budd, real pleasure having you on Crossroads. It's great to be with you. Thank you.